In simple moving average, you might have noticed that uh, we assigned equal weightage to every period that we used. For example, in n is equal to 2, we assigned a weightage of 1 over 2 or 50% to each month. Once we used n is equal to 5, we assigned a weightage of 1 over 5 or 20% to each of the period. And that was actually the reason that the smaller the n was, the more weightage we were giving to the most recent period. For example, for n is equal to 2, we were giving 50% weightage to the most recent period. And for n is equal to 5, we were giving 20% weight to the most recent period and 80% weight to the uh, rest of the four periods. In weighted moving average, we adjust moving average method to more closely reflect data fluctuations. So we assign a certain weightage to the actual demand for a certain period. So in this case, this is the future forecast and we find it by multiplying the weightage for a certain period with actual demand for that period. For example, if we are forecasting for April, so it could be something like 20% uh, uh, weightage given to the actual demand for January plus 30% weightage given to actual demand for February plus 50% weightage given to actual demand for, for March. So some of these weights should be equal to one. So 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.5 is equal to one. So for example, in this case, if we are using n is equal to two and we are taking weight one equal to 0.4 and weight two equal to 0.6. So the forecast for March will be equal to 0.4 into 36 plus 0.6 into 42. So we assign higher weight to the most uh, recent period. So whatever is the answer, that will be the forecast for March. Now for, for April, forecast for April will be equal to uh, 0.4 into 42 plus 0.6 into 56. That is why it is called moving average. We are dropping one period and adding a new one. Now we will solve this uh, data set using weighted moving average with the help of uh, Excel. And a question that you should have in your mind is from where do these weights come? So the answer is that we can assign these weights arbitrarily as I did in this case, and we can find optimum weights using some software package and we will do it using, uh, using Excel. So just solve with me on Excel and if you have any question, then we can discuss. So we have weights of 0.4 and 0.6, their sum should be equal to one. So in order to find the forecast for the month of March, we have to simply multiply the weights with the corresponding period. So for March, it will be equal to at this 0.4 multiplied by 36 plus this 0.6 multiplied by 42. So W1 into A1 plus W2 into A2. So that will be the forecast for, for March. Now we can apply the formula in each cell that will take a lot of time. So simple solution is to, the, uh, to fix the cells for the weights. So I simply click this cell C4 that is having the weight 0.4 and press F4 on my keyboard or for some of you it might be function F4. And same thing I do for the second weight that is in cell D4. So I fix this cell as well. 
So either using F4 or function F4, you can fix the cells for the weights. And then you can simply drag uh, to find the forecast for the, for the rest of the periods. So this is the simple way to do this. So I have applied the formulas for, for MAD and MSC and MAPE and these are the values that I have obtained. Now the question is, are these the optimum values for the weights? I'm not sure. So let's ask Excel if these are the optimum values or not. So on the data tab, there is an option of solver on the rightmost uh, corner. So we click solver and here uh, I select the objective cell that is the cell containing MSE. So that is in my case cell uh, L, L9 it is, I think. Let me cross check. So that is L10. L9. And I want to minimize this error and my decision variables are these two cells having weights uh, 0.4 and 0.6. I select those. Then I have to specify the constraints. So my first constraint is that this weight 0.4, I mean whatever weight I get in this cell should be less than or equal to the weight in cell D4, W2, I add it. Secondly, I want the sum of these two should be equal to one, the sum of weights should be one. And thirdly, I want these two weights should be, should be positive. So greater than or equal to zero. And then I, want to optimize this function. So I have selected the objective function to be mean squared error. So that is nonlinear. And then I, I solve. Now the solution is quite interesting because my way W1 turns out to be zero and W2 turns out to be one because I mentioned the way to be less than, uh, uh, less than the other weight and it should be positive. So it could be any value from zero and one. So W1 has turned out to be zero and W2 has turned out to be one. Now I could do the same for five periods case and by taking five weights. So I'm not making calculation, but I will show you the comparison and then you can, uh, you can solve yourself and match your answers. Now, if you compare the results, you can see that once we assign the weights arbitrarily, 0.4 and 0.6, so you can see that the error, the difference of these two values seems to be larger than once we found the optimum weight. So graphically, you can visualize that the error is less with the optimum weights. And if we look at the specific values, then MAD for arbitrary weights was 6.9. It was 6.5 for the optimum weights. And you can look for MSC and MAP. They are smaller for uh, optimum weights than for the arbitrary weights. So that is quite clear. Now, I solved for five months weighted moving average as well. And arbitrarily, I assigned the weights of 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4, and sum was one. And I got this result. And then I asked Excel uh, to solve for me. So I found W1, W2, W3 to be zero, and W4 was found to be 0 0.08, and W5 was found to be 0 0.92. You can see graphically, as well as with the help of numerical values, that the error is, of course, less. Uh, sorry, it's greater for the arbitrary weights and it is less for, for the optimum weights. So it was 6.8 in the case of weights assigned arbitrarily and it was 5.1 for the optimum weights. And you can see for MSC, 
87.8, and MAPE 6.7% and 5.0%. Now the main takeaway is very obvious that this is the optimum solution. Now you can check it and you can play with different values. You can never get errors smaller than these. So for example, you can assign weights to be say, you make it 0 0.05 and you make it 0.95 or you, you assign any combination of weights, you will never find errors smaller than this. So this is the optimum solution. These are the optimum weights. Error cannot be reduced further. So this is something you should keep in mind. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask.